This year's Autumn BL BMC Rally was held on the last Sunday of September at the Milton Keynes Museum. It's always a lovely rally and not too big or too small. Many clubs are represented and Tom Morley, chairman of the Metro Owners Club, who leads the organising team, does a great job with his helpers. The Land Crab Owners Club International put on a fine display of ADO 17, starting with Rob's lovely Woolsey 6, two Woolsey 1885s, Clive's 1800S, and another Woolsey 1885, a Mark II Austin 1800, and finally another Woolsey 6. The Metro Owners Club displayed all marks of this little car from the Mark I and II through to the Rover Metro and Rover 100. Six of the cars were red and our Rover 100 was the only amaranth or purple one there. This is a very early Cowley built Rover 75 Connoisseur. Next to it is a later Longbridge built Rover 75 2.5 which is painted in a rare monogram spectre paint which flips its colour under certain light conditions. Next we have an MG 1100 and a real Mini. This is followed by a 2.6 litre Rover SD1 a Triumph TR7 and a 3.9 litre Range Rover. Another lineup of lovely cars begins with this early Rover 820 Fastback. Next comes an Austin Maxi and an MGF. The flag indicates that we're now enjoying cars of members of the Gay Classic Car Group. The Austin Metro looks lovely, and next to it is one of its forerunners, also from Longbridge, the little Austin A30. This Rover 75 is from the last year of production at Longbridge, and is a 2-litre diesel. The MG ADO 16 is an 1100. The Green Triumph 2000 Estate is becoming rare, so it's good to see one here. The 3500 Rover P6 looks lovely, and I had one on my short list of cars when buying another car last year, but the XJ6 one. Finally, another Longbridge product, another real Mini. A modified Triumph Stag sits next to a row of three lovely MGB GTs and a V8 Rover P5, a Triumph Dolomite, and another MGB GT. When your classic car cover is coming up for renewal, try our club scheme arranged with Peter James Insurance. It offers great rates and a range of exclusive benefits, including free salvage retention and multi-vehicle options. Just click the link in the description below to get a quote. This MGB Roadster looks lovely. The MG ZT next door shines well, as does the Triumph TR7. I do love a black MG midget. Finally, another Longbridge product, an Austin Mini Cooper. Now here we have an interesting car coming into the rally field. It's a Morris ADO 16 with a difference. It was built by Innocenti in Italy and had been built for the Italian market. There was a tribute to Harris Mann, car designer extraordinaire. First this lovely Primrose Metro, a gap from which a TR7 had escaped. A Morris 1822 series. An Austin Allegro and a Morris Marina. Another Austin Allegro followed by Andy Pearman's MGF driven by his delightful daughter Zoe. 
and his Van den Plough 1500. A pair of Allegro estates, the red one being from Germany, breaking its alternator, but Nick from Austin Garages brought a new one down from Staffordshire to save the day. Another Van den Plough 1500, a Mark II Austin Allegro, an Allegro Keep Limited Edition, and another Mark II Allegro, and then yet another Van den Plough 1500. Note that the Van den Ploughs were never called Allegros. Let's have a look at the Innocenti IM3 we saw arriving at the rally earlier. At the back it has different arrangement for number plate illumination, the lights incorporating white reversing lights. At the front, the lights resemble those on an early Farina Austin A40, and the grille is different. It was powered by a twin carburettor MG1100 engine. Inside, the dashboard and instruments were unique to the IM3. Next to the IM3, we have another ADO16, a Vandenplau Princess 1300. This Mark II car features an improved interior compared to the Austin and Morris cars, with walnut trimmings and dashboard, leather seats, and even walnut picnic tables that fold out of the back of the front seats. To the front it sports additional driving lights and a grille that could have been taken from its bigger, older Farina designed relations. We're now looking at a diesel Montego estate. When it left the Cowley factory, it was nothing special. However, it has over 250,000 miles on the clock. The current owner was pulled over by the police. Wondering what he'd done wrong, the officer approached him and asked how many miles were on the clock. It transpired that the first owners were the police, and this officer used to drive it. The last time he saw it, there were over 800,000 miles under its belt. This means it's now covered over a million miles. This Montego Countryman is a seven-seater, two-litre petrol version and has done a lot less miles than the white million-mile car. If you look carefully through the rear side windows, you can see the seat belts for the rear children's seat. I enjoyed five Montego estates over the years and they were great cars the diesel returning over 60 miles per gallon. Leaving the rally field is a Nightfire Montego estate, similar to my last new one, which was made only a month or so before the end of production. This one being some four months older. We are now looking at a perfect Applejack Austin Metro belonging to the Reverend Colin Cork, formerly the Vicar of Longbridge, the Austin factory being in his parish. The car is a very early Metro, built during the first year of production, and is a really special car.
This Morris Minor Traveller has been modified into what must be a useful pickup. Certainly its woodwork appears to be in very good condition. We've seen Andy Pierman's MGF before, but here it is again. His daughter drove it all the way up from Portsmouth and back with the roof down. Full credit to her, although the MGF does have a heater in it. The Austin Maxi was one of the first hatchback cars and were well represented on the rally field. The field is home to the famous Milton Keynes concrete cows who did not appear to mind sharing with the cars. Aha, uh -huh, the TR7 missing earlier. The 1100 Club put on a pretty good show in their corner of the field and there was a good showing of marinas. It was lovely to see the development of the Rover 200 into the Rover 25 and another view of the Land Crabs and the Montego and Maestros. Ah, Dragon, that's Rover 100 again. And another look at the Metro Owners Club cars, followed on by the gay classic car groups cars. And here is Earl, my lovely XJ6. Since you're still here, we can only assume you've been enjoying the video, which is great. Uh, please show your appreciation by subscribing, click on the like button, and why not leave us a comment? We do always respond, and it really helps us out. Thanks very much. And here we see three of the Allegros leaving the rally field after an excellent get-together. If you have not visited our Facebook pages or YouTube channel, do search out Enthusiasts of British Motor Vehicles. We hope you enjoy your visit. <laughs>